You're welcome to this session at the Medical Sciences Media by Naftali Mhunza. And I always remind you, if you haven't subscribed, please always remember to hit the subscription button, like the video. In this session, we want to look at uh, determination of glomerular filtration rate. And here we want to use endogenous substance, creatinine, or we can use exogenous substance that is inurine. Those are the two guys we can use to determine GFR. Why do we use them? Because they are non-renal threshold substances. Not reabsorbed, no secreted along the renal tubules. That is the proximal, the rope of Henry, and the distal convoluted tube. So we want to see how can we do them to measure GFR. And why do we determine GFR in the lab? We determine glomerular filtration rate in order to monitor the severity of renal failure. Whenever someone who has renal failure, we do GFR to determine the severity. Is it mild, is it moderate, or it is very severe? Or it has it reached end stage renal failure? That is the significance of carrying out GFR or doctors requesting glomerular filtration rate. We, have, we use it to determine the functioning of the kidney and to determine the severity of the kidney injury. That is glomerular filtration rate. Substances we use is endogenous, we use creatinine, exogenous we use inu, inu. So in this GFR, before you begin to do this, you prepare the patient first. And how do we prepare the patient? Patient preparation. Preparation of the patient. How do you prepare the patient for GFR? First of all, you have to tell this patient to stop. You have to stop medications temporarily. Still, you stop medications which affect creatinine levels, medications like antacids. like vitamin C, that is ascorbic acid, medications like kepharosporins. Kepharosporins also affect or increase creatinine levels. You have to stop drugs like aminoglycosides. And aspirin, because aspirin produces salicylates which can affect the creatinine levels. So temporarily before you do a GFR on a patient, temporarily stop these patients on these medications. And as we saw that this creatinine is stored in the muscles, so it is affected by the muscle mass or exercise. So these patients who want to do GFR, they should not do strenuous exercise. They should not do strenuous exercise one day before the test is done. One day and during the day of, or and that day of the test, they should not do strenuous exercise because this one will affect GFR. Then still, it is also affected by, so these patients want to do GFR, you tell them in the one day before the test, they should not do diet rich in meat. So they should not take diet rich in meat rich in proteins, so we are saying they should not take meat, not take meat, because this meat contains creatinine. So one day to the test, these patients should be restrained from taking meat, because this meat might increase or cause false elevation of GFR, because it will increase the levels of creatinine, and at the long run, these levels of creatine will affect our results. After this, when the patient has come to the laboratory, you instruct them to collect a 24-hour urine. 24-hour urine, whereby you tell this patient, you give them like a, a two to five liter container. And this two to five liter container you, tell, you put, you add a preservative, and the preservative we use in creatinine is thymo. So we use the creatinine, a preservative thymo 
to preserve the urine. And after you have given them this, instruct them to empty the blood first. They should first empty the blood. After emptying by urinating, you tell them the next, every time they feel like urinating. For example, if they are beginning today at 8 a.m., tell them before 8 a.m. reaches, when 8 a.m. reaches like this, they first empty the blood. Then the subsequent urine which is produced should be put in this container having a preservative thymol. And every time they add urine, they should mix well with the preservative. And they keep adding urine until the next day, until next day, 8 a.m. And when this 8 a.m. reaches, they should put the last drop of urine in their bladder in that, and then they should bring, instruct this patient to bring the 24-hour urine sample immediately in the lab, immediately. And when this patient brings this 24-hour urine immediately, what you do as a lab technician, you take off, you, you first measure, you can measure the volume, measure the volume of 24-hour urine, volume of 24-hour urine, using a measuring cylinder, using a measuring cylinder, and you record, and record in mills. You record the results you have got in mills. If it is two, if you find it is two liters, you record as two me as 200 mills. So you record the values in mills, not in liters. So you measure the volume first. After measuring the volume, another step is you take off a blood sample. You take off a blood sample, and this blood sample specifically in the plain top to obtain serum, you use it to obtain serum, and this serum is the one that we shall use to determine serum creatinine levels. So we obtain, we, you talk of a blood sample and you obtain the serum <clears throat> and we use this serum to be able to determine the creatinine, serum creatinine levels. Using, of course, this one shall be using Jaffe, Jaffe's Rhodes method. All of them. And after also you have measured this urine in the mills, you also take an alicot. Take an alicot. Alicot means what? That this 24-hour urine is very big. We cannot use it all. So you take a portion. You take a portion of it, a small portion, and this portion you dilute it. One in 50. You use a dilution factor of one in 50 after you have obtained. So you get, you have measured your urine and you have got total volume. Then you get a smaller portion, then you dilute it one in 50 with distilled water, using distilled water. And after you have done it also, you determine it, you determine, you use it, you can use it to determine, so use the diluted, urine to determine urine creatinine, urine creatinine levels. So we see we have determined, we have used the blood sample to determine serum creatinine levels. We have also got a smaller portion of the 24-hour urine. We dilute it one in 50. This one is very important. So meaning the final result of the urine concentration, of urine creatinine concentration, we multiply it by 50. So after determining urine creatinine levels, remember we diluted it one in 50, you multiply the final result by the dilution factor, which is 
50. After that, we already have our serum creatinine, we have our 24 hour volume in meals, we have our urine creatinine levels. What we're remaining is to compute using the formula. And the formula of GFR, we use the formula that is glomerular filtration rate, or sometimes we call it creatinine clearance. You can call it creatinine clearance is equal to is equal to shall get this retinal clearance equaling to urine creatinine and this urine creatinine should then we multiply it by total volume of 24-hour urine. This volume should be in mils. Then we divide by serum creatinine. Then we multiply by number of minutes in a day, which is 140 minutes. So this is the formula we can use to determine GFR. When we have got our urine creatinine, we have got our serum creatinine, we have our 24-hour volume urine, then we multiply it by number of minutes in a day. So this is, these minutes, they are the ones that are found in a day. That is the, and this one, the results are recorded in mirrors per minute. The results are always in the mils per minute and the reference range is always reference range for men it is 97 to 138 mils per minute. Then for, for women we find it at 87 to 125 mils per minute. And as we said that this test called GFR, we are using it to determine severity. So we can always see that whenever we do GFR and it is this, with this one we know, it tells us that the kidney is functioning normally. There we have no worries. But whenever we find the GFR is dropping, maybe it is between 60 to 90, this one is mild. Then when we find it is between 30, 30 to 60, this is moderate. Then below 30 mils per minute, this one is severe. And whenever you go below, this is less. When you go below 15 mils per minute, that one is what we call end stage. End stage renal failure or renal disease. So that's how we can use it to determine the severity. First of all, to determine the functioning, and another thing to determine the severity of renal failure. So this is what we call GFR. We have seen it is affected majorly by meat, meals rich in meat, or taking much meat towards the test, having being on medications which affect creatinine levels like cephalosporins, aminoglycoside, vitamin C, that is ascorbic acid, and we have seen also it is affected by exercise. So we should always, and also we have seen the difference in sex, male having higher level than women. This is what we can talk about under GFR. And what causes reduced GFR, the conditions the conditions of reduced GFR decrease in the GFR is seen in glomerulonephritis, glomerulonephritis, that is inflammation of the kidney of the glomerulus 
We see it in pyronephritis. Pyronephritis. That is infections of the kidney, bacterial infection. When you have a period the uh, pelvic inflammatory disease or the bacterial infection affecting the kidney, we see it being elevated, being decreased. It's decreased in obstructions of the urine flow. Whenever there is obstruction of the urethra, seen in the prostatic hyperplasia, prostate hyperplasia, everything that blocks the urinary structures decrease GFR. And we have also seen it in dehydration, can be decreased in dehydration, and it can be decreased in cardiac, congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure can be decreased in shock. These are some of the conditions that can lead to decrease the GFR. And we are going to see that this glomerular filtration rate it is increased in pregnancy. Pregnancy increases GFR. You can see them being increased. So this is what we can talk or discuss about glomerular filtration rate. Thank you so much for listening. But medical science has made easy by enough. Remember to always subscribe and share your comments. Thank you so much.